be doing a funny exercise in a minute. He set this up for me, so I'm trying to work on my shoulders as well. I'm trying to work on a lot of different things that, you know, you hear people say about injuries, you have to focus on those little bits, but more than ever, yeah. with planter and the whole chain, I've really had to <laughs> wake everything up. Yeah, for sure. Well, I'll switch the camera on so we can continue with this conversation. Yeah, Thanks sure. for having me out, Jeff. I appreciate it. We're at One Track Club. <laughs> we were supposed to have uh, biomechanics coach uh, Anthony Fletcher here, but he's, he's not well, so yeah. we're going to roll without, and yes. you have a treadmill workout, but you're stretching first. So yeah, first yeah. I guess we can hear about what's happening today, and then on the warm-up outside, we'll talk more about what's going on sure. for you in general. Yeah. So what's happening today? Uh, this morning, I am doing my typical Thursday morning, which is mm -hmm. to go through some activations, and I, I'm just trying to like really push on my steady state running at the moment, um, having come back from a bit of an injury. I'm really trying to just get the quality of my steady running up um, and so for a long time in my career I've had used working on a treadmill um, and so for me I'm using this today to get a little bit of lactic profiles um, ideally if Fletch was here but I would just use my heart rate today yeah. Um, and yeah just kind of keep this as a part of my session that like guides the rest of my week so I can also find out if I'm a little bit tired if those lactics coming a bit higher if they're looking lower I, I know I can push on a little bit so yeah. it's a great snapshot of data that I use to inform the rest of my week or how I plan ahead. Um, and also because I'm self-coached, I use it as like a real benchmark to know, like just to reconsolidate like my training where it's heading. So Yeah, sure. Yeah. Interesting, cool. So we're gonna head out for a warm-up outside here in Farnham in a minute and we'll talk yep. about uh, yeah, I guess everything else to do with the injury and so forth. But um, currently in the in the warm-up doing your stretching routine. So you normally start with this before you go for a jog? Yeah, yeah okay. normally Fletch takes me through it. Um, I've learned it myself and I'm trying to build habits of, you know, I love just going out for a run like most runners. Yeah. Um, but coming back from an injury, I'm trying to be a bit more intentional. Um, and Fletch has really helped me with that at one track, so yeah. Yeah, awesome, cool. I'm just gonna like just do some scap retraction. Yeah, sure. God, this is really hard in my mask actually. I'm gonna take these gloves off as well. Sure. Oh, gosh. Sorry, I'm going to change the setup just there because it's, I'm going to fall down now. I'm just trying to work on my scap retraction. At the right, moment. okay. So you're just, just picking them off the ground slightly. Literally, they're so heavy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're always telling my face. <laughs> <laughs> Video. <laughs> <laughs> my shoulders just to get them going cause... Yeah, sure. and you get a little bit of free core in there as well which is quite nice <laughs> yeah I can tell that would be pretty tough on the on the stomach area <laughs> but I think it's nice then to use this and then go onto the treadmill because it just keeps that like rhythm and fluency yeah. which I think is quite good to kind of remember, especially coming out from injury, what your body feeling good should feel like. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. <laughs> so yeah, it's all helping. <laughs> so like, dodge a little bit of traffic at the start, but then That's all good. we'll That's be all pretty good. clear. Cool. So yeah, for a little, little tour of Farnham. Mini tour, yeah. <laughs> That'll be nice. Um, so we've got the Caesars camp over an amazing forest and actually, the top of that hill is called Flagstaff Hill. Okay. <laughs> um, but then we're just heading out towards the Surrey Hills now, like the very corner of it. Yep. Um, and we'll be running along North Downs Way. Okay. Uh, for a warm up. Yep. Um, and that'll bring us back into town um, and then into the studio. Yeah. So it's just a nice way to get a little bit of time off of the legs, off the treadmill, but keep the quality on the treadmill. For sure. For sure. Watch the ice. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we're on a better surface to film now. <laughs> so. Uh... <laughs> So yeah, so you're back. It's uh, it must be lovely to be able to train without any pain. Yeah. Let's hope it stays that way. Thank but, you. Um, yeah, I guess we could, it'd be cool to hear about what you've just sort of been through. I think a few British people would know, but for those that don't, the uh, the injuries since <laughs> since Tokyo. Yeah. So I basically had a partial uh, plantar tear, my right side of my foot. Yeah. Um, I had a full build up leading up to the Olympic Games, and like even completed my last long run, 24 miles, two weeks before, and noticed some very mild plantar symptoms but nothing that stopped me training yes. and then in the race my ankle locked up i just felt this swelling um and my shoe felt so much pressure um and this horrible decision of 
I need to do something about this. My foot isn't putting any force down or yeah. any pressure. I could not activate my chain. Um, undid my laces, took the shoe off, stretched a tiny bit, the races away. And it gave me, it gave me some like immediate release. And then <laughs> I got around that race because I knew how much it meant to be on that team. Yeah. Um, but since then I've been rehabbing from partial tear of the planter. So I'm in a good place. And like I said, it just feels so nice to not start with pain. Thanks to a lot more activation exercises that I do beforehand. Yeah. Um, but interestingly, I think like you were saying off camera, how pain can reinforce itself. Yes. And there is an element of being tentative with it. Yeah. Um, and so I'm now working with an SSC coach and even my hopping, I have to develop my plyometric ability. Yeah. And you're like, Steph, you're an overthinking it. And of course you do yeah. when you're coming back from any injury. But even seeing that in a break, like deconstructing the mechanics of jumping, yeah. I had to like single leg and I still am, like even on Monday uh, this afternoon, single leg ju jump onto a box yeah. and breaking down that fluidity and fluidid fluidity yeah. and creating that like force development that's really hard. Yeah, for sure. So he gets me to like catch a rugby ball. Right. As soon as I'm focusing on catching the rugby ball, I'm not thinking about the jump. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so that, for me, just reinforces that, yeah, you're just looking for that pain as well. <laughs> yeah. You know? I feel like that's me with COVID tests now in the nose. <laughs> Every time I do a COVID test, I'm, I'm, I'm like flinching going, oh! <laughs> anyway, now it's yeah. interesting. <laughs> what happened the other day? When I was, anyway. Um, yeah, cool. So, so, I mean, how do you think, did you take any time off completely after Tokyo, or was it? So, um, not really, actually. It was just straight into I, the, sort of fixing the issue. No, yeah, I found out a week later, I had an MRI scan a week after, uh, when I got back from Tony Saparo. And then I basically just span and cross-trained. Oh, sorry, it's right here. Oop. Yeah. I just cross-trained um, and then got to the point of, oh, mentally, I needed a bit of a break. Yep. So about three weeks after cross-training, I had about 10 days of just being a bit kinder to myself. Yep and really knowing how to address it. Yep. I think we kind of knew what it was, but that week in between we didn't... Go with that. Yeah. <laughs> so I literally just trained pretty much straight through, yep. reconsolidated, and that's where I've really focused on biomechanics and my strength again. Yep. And I do think partly it came about because of the lack of gym access yep. in COVID. Right. I'm trying to prepare for a marathon. As I'm pretty new in the marathon, I feel very much like there's that element now I've had a few goes at it, but equally you have to be so strong yep. to maintain that regular frequency. Right. Kind of really try to protect and just hold myself back on yep. for as long as possible. Yeah, okay. Um, and that's why I need like a little bit more intentional focus when I am. Thank you. Yeah, sure. That little bit more intentional focus around even more so my SSC, even more so my activations. Yeah. Um, and obviously, you might see that I'm in Hoka now, so yeah. I'm back to being self-coached. Yeah. Um, That's really great... exciting. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. I'm really excited about the partnership. I love the kit. Yeah, love we'll talk, the shoes. We'll talk more about the shoes when we get in the studio and you can show us. Oh, sure. Um, but yeah, that's really cool. <laughs> so Hoka's I'm trying really... to learn them. <laughs> yeah, that's but, really awesome. Um, I have been self-coached before, and if anything, it's just putting into practice all my experience. Yep. and what I enjoy doing together. Yeah, I'd love to and see, we talked off camera before about your your mileage going into your, I guess your best time and, and the Olympics. I thought it was, you know, on the low end for someone at your level. I think you said it was 68 <laughs> to, you know, around that. 68.5 average, yeah. Yeah, so it'd be cool to learn more about that, but um, yeah. we'll do so when we're back. But this is one of your common running routes? Uh, yeah. Sorry, okay, go. <laughs> yeah, I run through Farnham Park regularly. I often run off the top actually yep. and pick up another woods Caesar's camp. Nice. Um, so yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, um, God, this is a tough, this is a bit of a tricky route. Yeah. There's a lot of, so yeah, this is a beautiful day for it too. Yeah. But you normally, well, you almost always do your tempo stuff on the treadmill at least at the moment. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Um, I've used the tempo uh, like on the treadmill for many years. Yeah. Um, but so much so now that I just want to get that rhythm in my run running and might feel my biomechanics feeling strong again yep. um, and also it's that accountability of pace yeah, for sure. which I think you know post COVID trying to get people together for the type of session you want to do yep. um, at the pace you need to do it it just makes it a little bit more manageable for sure um, watch out here Matt there's a hill 
Okay, so I'm curious now about the hockers that you're going to wear today. Sure. Because I guess you're... I mean, yeah, yeah. what were you warming up in? And then what will you do the workout in today? And what else do you use? I'm just transitioning now into the Clifton. Okay. Um, so I'm just getting used to that. Um, and I'm just trialling the MAC at the moment. Mm -hmm. I go between the MAC and the Rincon. Um, but I really like this because I still like the firmness of the MAC, actually. Mm, okay. um, a lot, there's a lot of foam, sorry, there's a lot of miles on that. <laughs> <laughs> and it's winter in Britain, so it's pretty muddy. But yeah, um, yeah I guess I like the firmness still, because I feel like a lot of shoes are going for a stack height and a lot of foam, but I feel like there's a good blend on the hope of the stiffness and the foam. Sure. So um, yeah, I'm just trialing these and that. It's quite a nice, comfortable feeling for my planter at the moment. Um, and I wear my heel cups uh, just in there, just to kind of give me an extra bit of a raise, which helps, so. Yeah, awesome. Okay. Is there any other hopper that you're wearing at the moment, or just um, mostly those two? I've tried actually because you can see the conditions. I actually have tried the speed goats. Oh yeah. And I actually really like them. The tread is really good. Yeah. Like even just a little bit on gravel, it is really stabilizing. Yeah. Um. So when I do my long runs along a canal, my towpaths, um, I have to wear them. Yeah. Um, just to be a little bit more stable. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> cool. Okay. Um. So what did I do actually? Yeah. <laughs> Don't remember. Uh, yeah, so at the moment it's pretty consistent. It's a similar pace at the moment because yeah. I'm just building out. I'm just trying to get fit again. Okay. <laughs> so you're seeing me in this point of building fitness. So yeah. 16 is about six minute miles. Um, 16.5 is about 5.50, I think. So 16 kilometers, kilometers per hour. Kilometers yeah. per hour. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, I've got like 35 minutes of work here, which right. is very consistent. Nothing okay. special. But the interesting bit is just to see the flux in my... Um, the heart rate drift I guess sure and normally I would do my lactics here but yeah Fletch isn't around sure. um, and I helped develop that with him okay. I said you know why don't we take my lactics yeah. Um, so yeah today I think I'm gonna do the same I might just push the middle one up a little bit if I feel good but really I want to get to that last 35 minutes yeah sure. and I want to build that up to 50 so that's where I'm at at the moment okay so, so it's 35 yeah. minutes and we so you said you take your heart rate yeah. But no other measurements today. RPE, that's the only other thing I can take today. Okay. So just to see how that comfortable that feels from my week training. Like I'm starting to build the whole mileage as well. Yep. So actually some of the quality kind of then plateaus a little bit sure. as I'm building up some of the mileage. Yeah. Um, so yeah, nothing too special. I normally get up to like, when I was fit before Frankfurt, I think I was up to like 17 and a half for 50 minutes. Nice. Um, so really trying to touch on that 540 pace. Yep. Um, on a treadmill, it always feels way tougher as well. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, not too much, but there are things like, even like Fletch and I will speak about, can I predict my lactate? And I think that's quite nice to get that mm. like internal sense of how I'm feeling. So yeah, sure. let's awesome. do that today. Cool. Well, maybe we'll go over your training uh, after the workout. That's so, good. Yeah, very much. Yeah, cool. um, got my drink. What so what's this treadmill that you use? That, this uh, at, is at the, one the track Woodwave yeah. 4 runner. Okay. Um, not the curve, I'm grateful. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, so it's a great, I've always used Woodways, um, St Mary's at University use Woodways and I think the slats are just so much better, um, I think it reduces the planter force um, and the belt doesn't slap as much, I yeah. think the slats are just a bit more comfortable for that running surface, um, it's a tiny bit wider I think, you feel quite open and you get that sense of space on it. So yeah, yep. I love it. Awesome. Yeah. Let's get started. Yeah, and the great thing about this one actually is that it's got a virtual television, which I don't have in mine, so. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really nice. I've got to remember how to do it, so. Yeah. Quick start. Where is it? 15, and then I've got to add it from 15.
take it off my wrist. Yeah. <laughs> but in here it is quite nice to have it controlled. Yeah. So. I'm going to jump off for a minute, which I would normally do some flexions on my head.
bit easier. And when you're fully fit, it's like more like just little ripples. You don't notice them as much. So this will really inform that you know, I probably need to take the rest of it a little bit easier. Um, I'm going to do like a low, very low key 5k that we can. So I'll probably just think back to where it's out of there. Seemed to be pretty steady at like 174, 173 there. For, for I think, yeah, it's more just building out that time on the treadmill as well. Yeah. That's quite new for me at the moment. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'll be needing to push up to that 50 soon, so yeah. yeah. 
And the incline at 1%, yes. that's something that a lot of athletes do. Yeah. Um, is there a, a, any reason for that, or is that something that you've studied that's the right sort of thing? No, I think um, I was told by my physiologist it's to stimulate the same sort of air resistance and flow that you would experience when you're running. Mm. So just getting the angle just creates a little bit more of a realistic slipstream, I guess. Yep. Um, I'm not sure if that's the right technology, but <laughs> yeah. I, I think I prefer it on the treadmill as well, because running outside naturally we don't run on a perfect surface. Oh, so fine. I also think that's quite helpful. Yeah, cool. Um, yeah. Finish off this thing. So I did get it back down to 174, which kind of was my purpose, because I think if I'd have done another five, I might have tipped it to 180, which is not the zone I really wanted to be in. For sure. So I was sensible today, no, <laughs> and awesome. it makes me accountable, so yeah. Totally. Yeah. Okay. Half, and then I went back down to seven. So for me, the data is important, but equally, it's that feeling of it and interpreting that, how that then fills in my rhythm of my running. Yeah. Um, and building that bigger picture to the whole week. So yeah. yeah, I'm looking forward to taking this forward and it's just so accountable for me without a coach. Yeah, I sure. find that so interesting and I can have that as my benchmarks. And it's always good to look back at, you know, we all enjoy looking back at where we've come from, where we're heading. So sure. that helps me. Yeah, I try not to focus too much on the rest of the week and just have one focus of monitoring in the week, really. For sure. Yeah. Okay. So that last figure there is RPE, so that's just your procedure. RPE, yeah. yeah. And yeah. this is purely gut feel, yeah. what you think it was worth. Yeah. Okay, so there it is there. So yeah. the first one was six. That's out of ten, obviously. Uh, or, yeah, I don't yeah. think going up to 20 is, like, they have, like, yeah, there's a couple of different. Team. Yeah, there's a couple <laughs> of different measurements for that. Yeah. I think you need to, like, narrow yeah. the RP a little bit. But yeah. this is very, obviously, I'm narrowing my time close to the marathon as close as possible. But then I'll have that speed on the, around it, the other speeds, to support that work mm. the rest of the week. So I've got that change of pace and that sort of <laughs> reserve that I need as well. Awesome. Back to 13, anywhere between 13 and 14. I'm being a little bit easier myself going back to 13 at the moment. Yeah. And as I get a little bit fitter, just push that up a little bit more. Yeah. So I'll be heading to do my SSC at the University of Surrey. Strength and conditioning. Strength and conditioning, yeah. Um, and at the moment, I got my SSC coach on board to really get those benchmarks and find out what peak force my plant was taking. And I wasn't taking three times my body weight. Okay. So we're really trying to push that close to three times my body weight by create, like focusing on the rate of force development. So my stiffness is symmetrical in my tendons, but I have to, I'm doing a lot of like low level plyometrics, like single leg jump onto a box, pogos, um, isometric pushes under a bar, um, dead, uh, deadlift, trap my deadlift, um, hamstring iso, just keeping that chain really connected because actually the hamstring takes over when the planter was fatiguing. Um, so that's what I've been working on is my whole chain. And that's why doing biomechanics before running is just becoming more intentional in my posture. Yeah. So yeah, I want to have a long running career and I already have had one. Yeah. So I'm taking this time to really focus on, you know, getting things right now to propel me forward. Yeah. Hopefully. Big day of training. What's that? Big day of training. Very big day. Yeah. Um, and as I build up even more mileage, um, I'm now trying to interplay a little bit of track workouts earlier. Um, so I'm just introducing a little bit of striding after the gym. I'll jump on the track, very small, maybe a mile and a half, even a mile, and then do jog events right in the street, so four to five, two hundred, just to start introducing that um, surface change. Because um, when I'm running, I think that I still like a mix of surfaces. I don't do everything on the road. I run a lot on the grass, a lot on trail, like you saw in the warm-up. Um, treadmill, so I need to keep that variety. Um, and yeah, I am still aiming for some summer track races. Yeah. In my training. So using training peaks? Yeah, I just use training peaks. And I went uh, 10 at 16.1. And RP that 6. Heart rate. What was it? I didn't get the first one, did I? So. Next ten. Um, um, I've got. Then I take this into a spreadsheet, mm -hmm. um, and I can just actually look at it a lot clearer in my spreadsheet. Right. <laughs> but I guess it's just priming me for coaching one day. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> that is know. the debate people have with using a spreadsheet as opposed to training peaks, like obviously the spreadsheet's a lot more flexible with what you can write. Yeah. Whereas training peaks gives you all the data and gives you the ability to track things in a different, yeah. in a more unique way, yeah. And then 16.5, back down to seven, and then 174. 
So yeah, a little bit higher today, but it's good that I put it there, so I'll put a normal. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you just got, got to have the, the grind. <laughs> yes, for sure. Um, but yeah, if I pull up my actual marathon doc, which I just collate my data, so excuse my terror, I literally just saved everything onto this one. Um, so Valencia around 2.30. That was your first marathon? That was my first marathon. Mm. Um, my mileage here is very low, my average came at 61.4. And I knew I had to build my aerobic pathway. I wasn't happy with that setup, so that wasn't me. Um, I need to at least be above 70. Frankfurt, my average was oh sorry, 76.5. So yeah, but I was averaging some of the weeks around Doha, the world champs, about 68. Um, so 78. So that, that's quite high actually. Hmm. Um, but my longest run was only like 22 back here. Okay. Um, As so I hadn't got up to that 24 mark or anything like that. It was all just a bit more quality. Mm. Um, London was the first time I got up to these like hundreds and I was like so happy and that average of six weeks was 97.1 but then I had to fly back to London and it was locked down and I haven't finished that build up because I didn't I then changed my tact. Right. Um, London I was running but that was the very early signs of Covid um, and the lockdown having no SNC or physios available so I was cross training and training and I still managed you know up to 100 three weeks before um, the race but unfortunately my biomechanics just went right then so right. it really dropped off okay. and Highgate that was it the 62.2 <clears> so I was roughly for Highgate running 3108 was still my average I did get a few weeks at 80 71 74 79 but I'm still yeah over a 12 week period obviously because I'm racing as well yeah um low 60 so <laughs> there's a lot to work on yeah. Doha was 67.5 average and that was still, that was the one that I was saying, that was the build up into Frankfurt. So I was about 67.5 there. Mm -hmm. um, so Paro got to 75.5, so still a lot more consistent here. Really consistent. Um, less racing, obviously. Mm -hmm. So for me, that was a very consistent build. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, Houston half, 70.5. So mm -hmm. not, not too special. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, no, no... It is special in a way of, like, the quality that I do. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I think that's where well, I really excel. Doing, most athletes posting times like you are would be, would be, would be higher. I mean, you know, yeah. Molly Seidel is obviously at, like, 130, 140, but I'd say yeah. even Sarah Hall and so forth. So, no, it's cool. But... Yeah, and I've got a lot of room to grow, hopefully. Um, yeah, That's sure. where I, I want to head. Um, <clears throat> and I'm not very injury prone. I haven't been injured for, for six years before this because of my SNC, but I think COVID just really changed my accessibility to resources. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think I can use that speed and I think I'd encourage a lot of athletes to think about that if they are interested in the marathon. Mm -hmm. I think you can, you know, I've come from 1500, 5k to 10k. I think there's definitely a pathway there. Yeah. Um, and yeah, marathon is such a great event. Yeah, it's <laughs> funny, know. like I... 1500 guys wouldn't say that, but... <laughs> yeah, it's like, I have this conversation with a friend from Finland, he's a 217 guy, he's named Aki. And we always like, people are kind of often scared of the marathon, thinking mm. that it's something completely different. And yeah, mm. it is. it is a different beast, but like... I don't know. You can get, it, that get at it from different a lot, angles. A lot of really quick 5k, 10k people just, just, just avoid it, trying it. I, yeah. I don't know why. I'm not yeah. really sure why. I think this is a different angle that you can approach it. Yeah. Um, and I like to keep my quality as well. I don't want to do all of the marathon like specific classic sessions yet. Mm. I still come from that 5k, 10k speed play mm. and then build it out. And I don't think you have to build it too much. If you've got the like components of your week there, you know, picking up that long run can easily help you achieve that aerobic sure. system and reach it. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, just make it social. That's what I think marathon running is about. I think Very people true. don't see that how social it is when you're on those long runs, brunch after. It's all about that whole over a week. And I think it becomes a little bit easier sharing those miles with other people. For sure. So. Thanks for having me join today. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, no problem. <laughs>